I want to preach on something today that's not talked about a lot. And uh, I wrestle with this, and, uh, but I think it's time because we, we live in a gloom and doom time. And so I want, to get, I want to speak life. I want to speak hope. I want to speak comfort over you today. I want to talk about a subject, again, that's not talked about very much. But I want to talk about heaven. There's three. If I was talking about hell, y'all be going, oh, give them hell. You know, I'm just telling I'm going to talk about heaven today. This, listen, this is some good news. If you're not going to hell, you should be rejoicing that you're going to heaven. Amen? How many of y'all going to heaven? I want to see some heaven. I want to see some saved, born again, Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled people that can outshout hell today. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, y'all, hey, y'all act like you're saved. Good God. No wonder nobody don't want to come to church. Lord, have mercy. We're going to heaven. And y'all better learn to get along with each other. Because if not, I hope God puts y'all next door to me. Oh, God, there went something. There went something. So listen, here, here I, I want to, I really believe and I know we say this loose and lightly, but I've got to tell you what God downloaded in my heart. I believe that time is drawing nigh. Amen. Now listen, we say amen, but I want to I hone in on this. Listen to me. I really believe that Gabriel's lips are on the trumpet. I believe that. I believe that Gabriel's lips are literally on the, the trumpet, waiting for the command for God to say, Go get my children. And when God says that, there's going to be a universal horn from Israel to Kentucky. Everybody's going to be able to hear this horn. And at that time, the Bible says that the dead in Christ shall rise. And all those who remain shall meet him in the air. Hallelujah. And I, I love this. So I want to give you all some hope today. My question to you is this. Are you ready? This is a crazy question. Listen to me. Because two things are going to happen. Either you're going to die or the rapture is going to take place. Are you ready for either one? Come on now. Because the real you, when it's dying time, the real you will speak up. The real you will look up. So listen to me. I'm going to say this. and I'm gonna, I know I say this a lot. But listen to me. Being a church member will not. I don't care if you're a charter member. Being a church member. Y'all lean in. I'm going somewhere will not get you to heaven. Now, I know it shocks some of you because you're the, you're the most faithful member that the church has, but that will not get you to heaven. Watch this. Being a pastor, I believe there's going to be a lot of pastors in hell. Yep. I believe there's going to be a lot of deacons, going to be a lot of elders, going to be a lot of church members, going to be a lot of people in hell. Don't let it shock you on the day when we're at the, when we're at the white throne judgment. And, and you see, and God hears these, you hear these words, I don't, I, don't, I don't know you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Listen to this. Being a Baptist, being a Catholic, being a Methodist, being a Pentecostal, it will not get you to heaven. Watch this. Your money. Your money will not get you to hell. Your money will get you to hell. Your money, you cannot buy a ticket to heaven. But I know somebody. I know a name above all other names. At the name of Jesus Christ, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess, and I'm telling you there's only one way. He is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. I wish I had somebody in here today to help me preach this word. If you confess with your mouth, if you believe in your heart, he is the way. Somebody give God a good old praise in here today. He's the way. It's only through the blood. Only through, only through the blood. You can't be good enough. Well, Brian, I don't smoke. You'll smoke in hell. Whew, it's tight, but it's going to be right. So here, if I had a sermon title, y'all ready? Because I'm excited about this. How many of y'all are excited to come to church? I mean, I love church. I love church. Listen, church won't fix you, but church won't hurt you. So if I had a title, I, I've never preached this before, but I love, I love titles. I would title it, Come Up Here. Everybody say, come up here. Yeah, come up here. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. I love the book of Revelation. A lot of people are scared of the book of Revelation. But as a Christian, 
I'm excited because here's the deal. And I'm getting ready to read you two little verses that should take the fear off your life like that. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Listen to this. Now listen, Revelation 2 and 3, he talked to about the seven churches of Asia Minor. He talked about the seven churches. And watch this. One of those seven churches is the church of Elkhorn. One of those seven churches, wherever you, listen, wherever you're at, one of those seven churches was the churches of Elkhorn. So uh, here we go after the seven churches. The last church was the church of Laodicea. He said, I'd rather you not be cold or, or hot. He said, but, he said, I'd rather you be cold or hot, but not lukewarm. How many of y'all know a lot of lukewarm? Just barely getting by. Beware, because listen to me. Then we go from the seven churches of Asia Minor to Revelation chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. This is so good. The Bible said, I'm reading now the New King James. After these things, after these things, I looked. What was he talking about? John was talking about, he said, after the seven churches, after God spoke over the seven churches, he says, after these things, I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. Open door. Hallelujah. Open door. And the first voice, I love this, which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me. God has got a voice. Saying, he said these words, come up here. Everybody say that. Come up here. Everybody say it again. Come up here. There's going to be a day. It may be today. And to be honest with you, I hope it is. Because this is the bad, this is what, I'm going to tell you, this is as bad as it's going to get on Rafferty. This is my hell. But one day there's going to be a voice like a trumpet. The trump will sound. <laughs> the dead in Christ will rise. And he'll say these words, come up here. Now, if you're left behind and you see a pile of clothes, woo, that's going to be some bad seven years of hell for you. Bad time. And listen, and I will show you things, listen to this. I will show you things which must take place after this. Watch this, verse 2. Immediately. Everybody say immediately. I was in the Spirit. Well, this is so deep. So good. And behold, a throne set in heaven, and one set on the throne. See, listen to me. Satan has the church. He has me. He has you. So busy. We have started focusing more on the temporary than we have the eternal. We have started focusing more on the problems than we have the promises. We have started focusing more on the bad media than we have the good news of Jesus Christ. I know what I'm talking about, but listen to me, church. I'm here to testify, to be a witness this morning that heaven is real. Not because there's a book out there. I'm telling you, there's got to be something in your life, a time in your life that you realize that you take God off the temporary things and make him eternal in your life. You've got to quit playing church. You've got to quit saying, well, I'm a churchman. No, no, no. I don't care. Satan really don't either. Hey, here's what messes Satan up, that you're born again, saved, and know Jesus Christ, and you're on your way to heaven. That's what messes the enemy up. That's what messes up. So listen, he says, come up here. Everybody say that. Come up here one more time. Come up. Everybody say, come on. Come up here. Work with me. So what does that mean? You won't find the word rapture in your Bible. And that's where a lot of atheists and a lot of agnostic and a lot of people will say, well, you can't find the word rapture in the Bible. You won't find a lot of things in your Bible. But in the Greek, everybody say Greek. When you go to the Greek word, come up here, what that means is the rapture. You've got, you got to quit surface reading the Bible. There's got to be a time in your life you start studying the Bible. So words come up here means the rapture of the church. Now, I want you to remember this. John chapter 14, we hear this a lot at funerals, verses 1 through 3. I'm going fast, but I got, I got a lot to cover. The Bible says, watch. Here, I'm talking to somebody today. Let not your heart be troubled. I'm going to stop right there because I felt the Holy Ghost. Some of you are troubled. Some of you, you're paying more attention to the stock market. Some of you are more concerned about COVID-19 than you are the return of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, listen to him, lean in. Let not your heart be troubled. Why, preacher? Well, I'm glad y'all asked. Watch, watch. He said these words, if you believe in God, you can believe also in me. In my Father's house are many trailers, I mean mansions. <laughs> 
Listen, I lived in a trailer. It's all right. But watch this. I'm, I'm advancing. I'm going to go from a trailer to a mansion. Y'all didn't hear me. I'm going to go from blacktop to streets of gold. Hey, hey, I get excited about heaven. We need to get heaven on our minds. Because listen, we, listen to me. We've got the best news ever. We've got the best news ever. And we've got to believe it. Because there's going to be a day you're going to take your last breath. Guarantee it. Do you know where you're going? Do you know eternity? Do you know Jesus Christ? And don't let your hearts be troubled. Because listen, if you believe in God, you can believe in me. Because in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I love this. I love, he had to preface this a little bit. Man, if it wasn't so, I'd have told you. <laughs> That's Kentucky right there. If it wasn't so, I would have told you. Watch this. Here's, here's what I want to get in your spirit. But I go to prepare a place for Brian Rafferty. You've got to make the Bible your chapter. You've got to put your name in that verse. I go to prepare a place for Tracy Skaggs. Y'all see what I'm talking about? Boy, I didn't get you happy right here. It may not some of you, but it does me because I ain't going to hell. This he says, I go to prepare a place for you. And watch this. I might come again. I will. I will come again to receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. I'm so thankful today. And I want you all to remember something. I'll get this in your spirit. Revelation chapter 4. We're talking about John. John the Apostle. It's not John the Baptist. A lot of people get this confused. John the Baptist died. He got his head cut off. But there was a John the Apostle. John the Apostle. He, well, listen to me. This is so crazy. Before he got to Patmos, before he got to Revelation, the Bible says, and scholars say, and Josephus says, that they placed him in six feet of boiling oil. How bad is y'all's day? How, how bad is your day? But listen to me. They put him in six feet of boiling oil. Josephus says in his book, he said these words, when they got him out, his skin was literally drooping down, where he was burnt to a crisp. But I love this. And I feel the Holy Ghost on this. I got to speak this over somebody's life. They tried to kill him by putting him in oil. But they couldn't kill him because he was still a man that had an assignment on his life. So what I'm trying to say is this. Some of you, God says, write a book. Some of you, God is dealing with you right now. Listen to me. Listen to me. They could not kill John in boiling oil because he still had an assignment. He had the book of Revelation to write. The book that we're reading and I'm preaching out of today was written thousands of years ago. So what I've just stopped by to tell you is this. You can't stop God. Not even all. Not even boiling all can stop the assignment that God has on your life. So I don't know who I'm preaching to today. I'm going to preach myself happy. I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but what's, listen to me. Depression cannot kill you. Sugar diabetes cannot kill you. Come on, somebody. Bullying hot oil cannot kill you. And I tell you this, boys, keep writing the book. Keep writing your story. Because the enemy cannot stop or kill you. Even if he puts you in a hot situation. Because here's what I know. When John got on that island, he was sitting there, and the Bible said it was the Lord's day. Hallelujah. The Lord's day. The Lord's day. And the, I love this. He said, John, I'm not done with you. Some of you feel like you're alone. Some of you feel like you're on an island all by yourself. But I've come by 3145 Road to tell somebody today, God is not finished with you. God, keep writing the chapter. Keep writing the book. Keep plowing the ground. Keep being a soul winner. Keep winning souls for Jesus Christ. You say, Brian, I, I'm just not excited about God. Well, evidently, you have not went to hell and back yet. Because if you go to hell and back, if you get in the ditch, if you get in some bowling oil, you'll preach Jesus. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to this. Oh, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. For the Lord himself would ascend from heaven with a shout. Ooh. I don't believe in all that shouting. You may not hear the shout. The Lord himself 
will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And we shall always, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, when 10,000 years goes by, we will still be forever with the Lord. Therefore, watch what it says, therefore comfort one another with these words. So the gospel is a revelation, Thessalonians, it's a comforting word. According to the Bible, we should preach about heaven. Come on, somebody. We are commanded to preach about the rapture of the church. I don't, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mid, I'm a post, I'm a post rapture. What? Well, it's rapture. I don't care if you're mid, post, pre. We're going out. <laughs> we, we're going out. We're, watch this. And I'm going in the first load. Because the Bible says, if you do not accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior during this time, now listen to me, this is where it gets crazy. Listen to me, because if you have heard the gospel, and I can prove you wrong in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because when he's feeding you, it's good. If you have heard the gospel and you have rejected, you will not have a chance to be born again. Because the enemy, the devil, is going to put a strong delusion. He's going to put a lie on you. If, listen, here's, here's how I know. Listen, here's how I know it's truth. Because if you can't worship him now in a free country, and you can come to church for free, and you ain't got a gun held to your head, and you think you'll worship him once the horn sounds, you have done lost your mind. Because it's going to be hell on earth then. It's going to be seven years of hell, 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 hell here on earth. And the Bible says those who have never heard the gospel. Well, Brian, what about all those who have never heard it? The Bible says, I'm going to give them another chance. But if they do, they're going to lose their head. Well, y'all, are y'all ready for a good Bible study? Yeah, y'all ready for a good Bible study? Because listen, the church has been lied to long enough. I'm telling you this. Heaven is talked about 1,865 times in the Old Testament. 1,865 times in the Old Testament, 316 times in the New Testament. So if the Bible talks about it that many times, don't you think we got something to shout about today? Don't you think we got something to dance about today? Don't you think that if, if, if the Bible talks about heaven that much that we should be talking about heaven here on earth? Lord, we talk about everything else. Who's going to win the election? Who's going to do this? What party are you voting for? We talk about everything. Here's what I'm doing. Let's get heaven on our mind. Let's get heaven on our mind. You start looking at people with heaven on your mind, whoo, that'll change your direction. That'll change everything in your life. God is getting ready to say these words because he talked about the seven churches, Revelation 2 and 3, Revelation 4, the very next chapter, verse 2, verse 2 verses. Come up here. I want to make an announcement this morning. I wrote this in my notes because I felt this Friday in my office. I want to make an announcement public today because there's a lot of churches that don't believe in heaven. Don't be fooled. There's a lot of churches that do not believe in the devil. They just believe that you die and you just float. Well, that's going to be a floating mess. That's going to be a bunch of junk floating around, isn't it? Listen to me. I'm going to tell you this morning and I want hell, Satan, the devil, and his demons to hear what this church is saying here today. We still believe in heaven. Yeah, hallelujah. We still believe in heaven. We still believe that there's a hell to shun and a heaven to populate. We still believe in God. We still believe in Jesus. Come on, somebody. We still believe in the Holy Ghost. We believe in the rapture. There's some things in your life you can't waver on. You cannot waver on them. Cannot. I'm not going to allow the enemy, the devil, to take heaven off the table. Jesus rose again. Jesus is coming back again. That's his story. He wrote it. I believe it. That settles it. And I'm telling y'all today, there's a heaven to talk about. <clears throat> and as I was preparing this sermon, an old song come up in my spirit. And it goes, I, I can't sing, but it goes a little bit like this. 
He says, well, I'm feeling mighty fine because I've got heaven on my mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm feeling mighty fine because I've got heaven on my mind. I, can, I don't care if y'all like it or not. It's my, it's my sermon. I can do it how I want to do it. But I, I, listen, I'm just telling you, the reason why I'm standing here today because I've got heaven on my mind. You want to make a difference in your life? Get heaven on your mind. You want to get a shout in your life? Get heaven on your mind. Oh, come on, Elkhorn. I'm feeling mighty fine this morning. Why, preacher? Because I've got heaven on my mind. Somebody give God praise. Oh, come on, somebody. You want to, that, it'll make you feel good. I, I'm just telling y'all, heaven makes me feel good. I love talking about heaven. I look back through my notes, and I want to apologize this morning. I've been your pastor for 12 years. You know how many times I've preached on heaven? Three. Three times. You say, Brian, why are you apologizing? Because it's too good not to talk about. <laughs> it's too, I'm feeling good, y'all. Everybody say, turn to your neighbor and say, y'all going to talk with me this morning? Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm feeling fine this morning because I've got heaven on my mind. Come on, Simba. Yeah. I'm feeling fine. Come on, let's do it again. I'm feeling fine. Yeah. Yeah, because I got heaven on my mind. I'm not going to hell <laughs> so I can run. I can dance. Y'all ain't no fun. Y'all ain't, ain't no fun at all. Yeah. If I was at a Pentecostal church, they'd get a pro on the drums. Boom, 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 you know. I'm just telling y'all. I'm just telling y'all, listen to me. I'm feeling fine this morning. Because I've got heaven on my mind. Y'all may not like it, but you'll be going to lunch and you'll be singing. You know, I'm, I'm feeling fine. Because I've got heaven on my mind. Wow. Y'all believe in heaven? Amen. Won't y'all act like it just for five seconds? Why, won't you act like you believe in heaven? Amen. Come on, stand to your feet all over this house. Come on, stand to, oh, everybody. Stand, on, stand up to your feet. Come on, give God a big old praise in here today. Come on, hallelujah. Woo. Yeah. Well, I'm feeling <laughs> mighty fine. Because I've got heaven on my mind. Yeah, y'all doing better now. Yeah, y'all doing better now. So listen, here's the deal. Brian, I don't believe you, you should act like that in church. I, I'm, not, I'm not preaching for you. I'm giving you a word. Listen to me. Quit listening to the media more than you are the rapture. Quit listening to the bad news more than you are the... Y'all, we're going to heaven. I can't get that out of my spirit. I'm not going to hell. I don't have to burn. I don't have to see and hear the gnashing of the teeth. Whew. Man, let me mess with y'all just a little bit. If you could travel at the speed of light, if you could travel at the speed of light, you could get to the planet Mercury in 4.5 minutes. And Mercury is 57 million miles away. I studied hard. Y'all help me. Y'all just... If you could travel at the speed of light, which I feel the Holy Ghost, you could get to Jupiter in 35 minutes. And Jupiter is 390 million miles away. You could get to Saturn in one hour and 10 minutes. And Saturn is 793 million miles away. Pluto is billions of miles away. And it would take hours to get there. But I love, I love, I love what, the, what John the Apostle said. He didn't say after I started feeling good. He didn't say after I went to church. He was on the Isle of Patmos with his skin drooping down. Had a bad day. But the Bible says immediately, immediately. I'm talking boom, there. Oop, there it is. I felt that here. Y'all can't handle it. Immediately. Immediately. Everybody say immediately. Y'all know what immediately is according to the Greek? Nine-tenths of a second. Everybody blink your eyes. Oop, you're gone. 
you're gone. Think about that. It takes to get to Saturn hours. And it's billions of miles away, billions of miles. God says, when you hear that horn, when you hear that horn, and I tell my son Jesus Christ to go get my children in nine-tenths of a second, I feel the Holy Ghost. In nine-tenths of a second, we're going to be gone immediately, Jenna. Immediately, immediately. It's not, you don't have enough time to run back home and say, Mama, do you know Jesus? We don't have enough time to go back into the school system and say, Hey, do you know Jesus? So while you are alive, I while we are alive, while we are here, before the nine-tenths of a second, can I get somebody to say, I'm going soul winning today. I'm going to make, I'm going to make sure. The Bible says it's wise unto a man to win souls. It's wise. Why is the Elk Corner so winning life-changing church? And watch, I am not changing. Y'all would not believe one of the biggest battles I've got as your pastor. People want me to change. They want to change Elk Corner. Well, Han, you had that logo long enough? Nope. Nope. As long as I'm in this pulpit, we're going to plunder hell. We're going to populate heaven. And nobody from South Central dies and goes to hell. Can I just get a witness on that? Yeah. And I want to say this. I'm almost done. I don't know who you have buried. I don't know who you've had to say goodbye to. But one of these days, that old graveyard's going to be uprooted. One of these days, hallelujah. One of these days, we're not going to need to bury nobody else. So I don't know. I'm trying to give y'all comfort this morning. Now, I know we've all got lost. We, we got loved ones that have went on to be with Jesus Christ. But the next time, everybody say the next time. The next time we see them, we'll never, ever, hallelujah, never have to give them up again. Forever. And then y'all better start loving me and I better start loving y'all. We're neighbors. Yeah. Church, we need to get heaven on our minds. We need to get heaven on our minds. Ilkhorn, what we're doing today, here, I want to say this. Praise team, you guys come, come. What we're doing today is not in vain. I got to say this. This praise and worship, you may not like the song, but this is not vain worship up here. This is not vain preaching. I believe what I preach. I believe in heaven and I believe in hell. And we got to get heaven on our minds. What you're doing today, listen to me, the pain, the agony, the hurt, the trials, everything that you have been through in your life did not go in vain. My dance is not in vain. My shout <laughs> is not in vain. You being here today, you're not wasting your time. It's not in vain. And here's what I wrote in my own personal. Brian Rafford, I wrote this in my notes. If you truly believe Jesus was coming back today, it would make a difference in your life. Come on, y'all. Come on. If we truly believe Jesus Christ was coming back today, how would you act? You wouldn't be getting up 59,000 times going to the bathroom. When the altar call was given, you wouldn't get up and leave. I'm just telling you. Whew, God, it's tight now. If you truly, if I truly believe that Jesus Christ was coming back today, it would change my direction. It would change my walk. It would change my attitude. It would change everything at school. It would change everything how I treat my wife. Ooh. How I treat you, how you treat me. If we truly believed that Jesus Christ was coming back today, what would you change? What would you change in your life? 2,163 times. Listen to this. It's amazing. 2,163 times in your Bible, Jesus talks about Jesus coming back for us. 2,163 times. If we truly believed that, we would purify ourselves. 
I wrote this down. I've, I preached this at funerals. I preached it here before, but I can't get away. It's one of them spiritual words, Bobby, that when you hear it from somebody, it just sticks in you. No matter how old you get in life, if it's spiritual, it'll hang with you. Listen to me. You can't live wrong and die right. Come on. You, you, you. God give us a soul in here. You can't live wrong and die right. You can't. Now listen to me. I'm, I'm, I'm landing this plane. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. I'm almost done. I promise. It's only 20 after. God did so good today. The Bible in Revelation 21. Everybody say Revelation 21. Come on, the rest of you say Revelation 21. Because I want y'all to check me out. It tells us, listen. What will not be in heaven. Whew. Man, this is some serious stuff right here. Revelation chapter 21 tells us what will not be in heaven. If you want to get down to it, it's verse 8. But God, as I was reading that, here's the good news. You ready? Let me tell you what will not, Jay, what will not be in heaven. Y'all ready? I love this. There will be no funeral homes in heaven. The upper taker is going to put the undertaker out. The upper taker is going to put the undertaker out of business. There will not be hospitals in heaven. There will be no divorce courts in heaven. There will be no bankruptcy in heaven. There will be no addiction centers in heaven. There will be no suicide in heaven. There will be no drugs, no pills, no alcohol in heaven. There will be no shooting. Hallelujah. There will be no murders. There will be no terrorism in heaven. There will be no hate. There will be no arguments. There will be no racism in heaven. Somebody say amen. Listen to this. There will be no gossip. There will be no lies. There will be no worry. There will be no depression. There will be no child abuse in heaven. There will be no wars. There will be no tears. There will be no heart monitors in heaven. There will be no wheelchairs. There will be no cancer in heaven. There will be no sickness, no sugar diabetes. And there will be no more death. No more death. No more death. No more death. No more death in heaven. Somebody give God a praise. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. We got to get heaven on our minds. Woo, God, we praise you in this place. Hallelujah, God, we thank you for heaven. Woo. Listen to this. Listen to this. The next words. We're going to hear come off God's lips. Is come up here. Come up here. Come up here. So, wherever you are at, everybody stand to your feet. I'm done. Wherever you're at, whatever's going on in your life, I'm going to ask you the most serious question. Say, Brian, I already know Jesus. Well, act like it. Act like it. Act like it. Please don't die and go to hell. Y'all hear me? I do not want to see you walk past Jesus and say, Dag on it. I thought they were saved. I thought they knew Jesus. And not because you're here today does not mean you know Jesus. Y'all hear me? This word's got to get out. This word's got to be preached. There's a song by Mercy Me. It's called I Can Only Imagine. I want to read the lyrics. Should we sing it loosely? But listen to what it says, Logan. I can only imagine what it would be like when I walk by your side I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory. (laughs) 
I'm sorry. Surrounded by your glory. What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Oh, and all will I be still? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Or will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Now, Lord, I preach this over you today. I can only imagine when that day comes. When I find myself standing in the sun. I can only imagine we would all do forever, forever. Forever worship you, I can only imagine. I can only imagine when all I would do is forever, is forever worship you. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. For the next five minutes, this is the part I wanted to land a plane on. I want us to believe with our heart. It could could happen. This is not a false hope because I believe that literally Gabriel's lips are on the trumpet waiting to hear God say, go get my church, go get my children, go get my Sarah, go get my Beth, go get my Will, go get my wife, go get my Gail, go get my Tracy, go get my Perry, go get my Bobby, go get my Travis and Jamie. He's going to say that. The next five minutes as they play, I want us to really believe. What if the next words that you heard was come up here? Come up here. Could you stand before God with the heart that's in you right now? Come on. Could you stand before God with what's going on in your mind right now? I want us to believe like the five minutes be 1130 the trumpet's going to sound and watch here I don't mean to mess y'all up but all that money you're carrying around you can't take it to heaven with you all them hours at work that you're working taking away from people that you love that's going to be in heaven with you we better get heaven on our minds because today You could hear, I could hear the words, come up here. Lord, church, I'm feeling mighty fine this morning because I've got heaven on my mind. Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, every person that's here, God, let us get heaven on our minds. Let us worship you, God, like it's our last five-minute praise break. God, I pray that, Lord, you line us up Line us up, oh God, line us up. God, forgive me. Forgive me because I have failed you. And God, I just pray, Lord, the words, the next words I hear you say is come up here. Lord, if there's anybody lost in here today that does not know you, God, save them. Save them, save them, save them, God. I pray this prayer believing, God, that everything's getting ready to change. Because God, we're feeling mighty fine. Because we got heaven on our minds. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, this altar's open. I want you to come. You got five minutes. You got got five minutes. If you knew that the next word that you heard is come up here, would you just stand there? Would y'all just stand there? Or would God find you on your knees? Would God find you praising Him? It's church time. This altar's open. You come as God leads. Amen. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Crowned by your glory.